it's your Casey, and welcome to another episode of Unbox Radio, a show where we talk about the latest and biggest news stories in the world of sneakers. Joining me today, as usual, is Corey and Marco. Fellas, what are y'all wearing today, or what are you guys planning on wearing? Corey, let's start with you. Today, I want to bring out one of my favorite shoes of last year, uh, the Supreme SB. Um, I, I like this colorway kind of the best. I had an opportunity to get the lime ones. I'm not a lime guy. Uh, I know, I know Casey is very disappointed. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not a lime guy, but you know, like for these, I was just like, yo, like these kind of remind me of like the OG Jones from back in the early 2000s. Um, so yeah, for me, I was like, yo, these are good. Let's convert you to a lime guy, okay? By the end okay, of right. the this season, we're gonna convert you to a lime guy, okay? I'm with it. Okay. I'm with it. Okay. You gotta show me the light. I got you. Marco, what do you have on today? It's that time of the year again where I become the biggest college basketball fan in the world, right? I don't watch a game all season. And then March Madden starts and I'm hooked to the TV. So I had to bring out something special. Um, the Tar Heels made it to, to the... Uh, Sweet 16, they're going to be facing off against UCLA. I don't, I'm don't. i not necessarily a, a UNC fan, but I mean, if you grew up an MJ fan, then you grew up a UNC fan by default. So there was a lot of crazy games this week, and I'm looking forward to more. Um, I don't have the St. Peter's PEs yet, but I got I got the Tar Heels, yeah. so I'm at the, I'm at the Rockies for, for good luck uh, this week. That is so funny that you say that you don't be, you weren't like you don't become a fan until like March Madness. I feel like that's like a lot of people, you know. And I honestly like I had a little slip up yesterday, so I'm not gonna lie. Like I did not tune into that or the Arizona uh, TCU game. It was on late. Let me, I know. Let me tell you and something. So, right. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Ben Matherin is real. He is real. He is real deal. Real deal. Right, and I know we don't talk about basketball like a lot of this show, but I feel like because it's March Madness, we can just like tap in a little bit. But I, I definitely did not like chime in until like overtime, and I was like, TCU is not boxing out. I was like tweeting about it, and everyone's like, TCU <laughs> literally outboxed U of A like the entire game, and I was like, okay, well they didn't box out when it counted in overtime. So, <laughs> 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 okay, well moving on um, to news unbox. This is a segment where we highlight the most popular and trending news stories in the world of sneakers and much more. So first up, um, ahead of their spring 2022 release, ALD teased three new colorways of the 550 silhouette. New colorways being introduced is brown, khaki green, and a deep rosewood colorway. Each pair features a white leather upper with a slightly yellow midsole. Official release details for these ALD 550s have not been disclosed, but make sure you guys check back with Soul Savvy, of course, for more, in more info on this release. Corey, what do you think about this new release? I mean, I think, you know, I think the, the 550 has, has seen a, quite a resurgence over the last probably year and a half um, and much, uh, much due to, you know, Ame's kind of success in the streetwear space as of late and really how they, you know, concerted and tried to elevate themselves as, you know, kind of being past a streetwear line and just a streetwear line, whatever that means, um, to, you know, some sort of upper echelon or higher fashion. Um, I like the 550 as a model. Uh, you know, I think we talked about a couple of episodes ago and, you know, people kind of refer to these as like basketball loafers, like the way I've seen people style them, you know, with a nice pant or something like that. Uh, you know, they're really cool. Um, these three colorways, I, I'm kind of seeing, you know, they're kind of putting them under the ALD formula of like creating that kind of uniform uh, like look in essence, you know, real tonal colors, the brown, I think you said like the rosewood, the, you know, the, the, the navy army green, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, the army green. Um, you know, so I see these as kind of not necessarily like a money grab, but I see these just like a very simple, you know, piece for somebody's wardrobe. Um, the hype around these shoes are going to be very real because the hype around Ame is very real. Um, so it's going to be very probably hard to get these. I personally like uh, the colorways that they did in like the first couple of seasons, the the yellow and greens, the red, white, and blues, like the, like the different colorways and different colors in the sneaker kind of was dope. But, you know, these simple uniform versions are really cool too. The 550 is the comeback sneaker of the century, right? There's been a lot of shoes that come um, back into trend after years away. The 550, to most people's knowledge or their uh, recollection of history, was never popular, even when it was uh, mm -hmm. debuted in the early 90s. To see this is 100% 
um, credit to Teddy and ALD, right? This is a shoe that is not going anywhere. It, it's going to be a staple for them. I, I like the, the I'm going to call it the mocha colorway. I know that's crazy to say, but it, it really is a trickle down effect, I think, from trend standpoint to see how the mocha AJ1 really kind of took the world by storm outside of sneakerheads. And then um, obviously there's the mocha 3 that wasn't as popular when it dropped both times and then the mocha one kind of mm. started that colorway so it's interesting to see that the different brands are paying attention to the colors that people like not that the jordan owns brown or, or mocha but it's a color that's on trend and i'm not gonna lie man it looks great on this silhouette so i think these are dope all, all of them and to corey's point this kind of matches that ald uniform that a lot of their fans um really swear by these days i think it's dope yeah, I feel like we've seen a lot of brown in like the last couple of seasons and I am completely here for it. Um, but I know we've talked about in past episodes like designer collabs with sneakers. Um, and so it looks like Adidas may have another high-end collab on the way. Um, IG user Apollo Luo, and I could be messing this or butchering this name up, 1976 teased images of a Balenciaga Adidas Triple S silhouette over the weekend. I know a lot of people are like kind of over that silhouette. So, I mean, I'm interested to see kind of like the feedback on this. But um, as seen in the image, the collab uses the Balenciaga Triple S model as the base. Um, and then features overlay patterns with three stripes on the side and co-branding on the heel tab. The shoe also features a white base color scheme with black accents. As of now, Balenciaga nor Adidas have confirmed this collab. What do you guys think? Would you guys like to see this collab? Have you guys seen the silhouette and what do you guys think of it? Marco, your face. <laughs> I thought the Triple S was dead. I'm going to be honest with you. I thought yeah. that trend, mm -hmm. uh, we had left it behind. But um, if there's one thing that Adidas is not afraid to do is to is to try to revive some models. I still see them retroing NMDs and um, a number of, of OG <laughs> Ultra Boost colorways, which is still a great shoe. But th they're not afraid to go back and try it again. I think this shoe is three or four years too late. And I'll, um, but there is some synergy there, right? Between the three stripes, the three souls, the triple soul, whatever you want to call it. So I, this, this collab doesn't, it, it would have made sense a while ago. I don't know if it's the right time now. And I also feel like what high fashion house has Adidas not collaborated with, right? Um, I, I feel like it, it means more when you have a really strong relationship with one house and you're kind of and, and you're carefully crafting what what goes out like the Prada stuff that they've been doing has been consistent so i'm just curious if this is going to continue um but you know there there's a lot of synergy there the last thing i'll say is you know kanye's relationship with uh balenciaga and mm -hmm. and obviously with adidas I'm, I'm sure that um from their point of view it looks like these fan bases overlap a lot and i wouldn't be shocked to see this shoe um all over the streets when it comes out um for as much as i say that this trend is out people surprise me every day so i think it's interesting yeah i totally agree i think it would be dope to see like you know a really like cool balenciaga adidas collab right now i don't think necessarily like this silhouette is it like i you know you guys have said this silhouette is like I think a little too too little too late you know what i mean um and it would be cool to see just maybe like a different silhouette um collab with adidas uh corey what do you think i, I wouldn't be surprised if, if this you know if this picture was a couple years old mm -hmm. um because just like you said like the triple s has kind of like seen its way out like it's and not even just seen its way out trend wise but more so like the opinion of it is like nobody really wants that bulky shoe anymore um you know, and kind of like what Marco said, you know, like all the brands that, you know, Adidas has been collaborating with, you know, their Prada stuff, the Gucci stuff that we covered a couple of weeks ago. Like when you look at the differences between the two, like the Gucci stuff was really cool. Why? Because they played into like a lot of their classic silhouettes. They played it into like their classic models, even like the, uh, the apparel side of it, you know, really appealed to more, you know, classic throwback, you know, stuff that Adidas is really good for. Then you look at something like this and it's just like, they literally just slap two things together, put three stripes and co-branding, and like it is what it is. Um, I definitely understand, you know, obviously the synergy, like Marco said, also as well, um, between Kanye, you know, with Balenciaga, you know, currently, you know, and Adidas. Um, I think this is an ugly shoe, um, and and not even just for you know just for the triple S, but you know even just the co-branding on there, like it just doesn't look. Um, and, and in comparison to. You know, some of the work that they've done, you know, with Gucci, you know, with some of the stuff with Prada, which actually looks like a lot better. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is something that just popped out now, but this is, might have been like a prototype of something that from a couple years ago. This is the first time that I can think of in recent memory that we're seeing a, a footwear and a high fashion collab where 
they choose the high fashion silhouette, which to me is mm -hmm. saying a lot because Adidas makes shoes. Balenciaga doesn't make shoes doesn't. at the same level as Adidas, right? They're not a footwear company uh, at it, at its core. So it's interesting to see that because I couldn't imagine Nike collaborating with, with Dior and them choosing a Dior silhouette yeah. with Dior technology when Nike's like, we make the shoes, right? So that's interesting yeah. to me too, to see, the, to see them slap their logo on a sneaker that they didn't make. Yeah, no. Also, I mean, are we, are we, are, is this a confirmation this is real? Because even that, the more I look at it, um, okay, it's, it is confirmed. No, 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 okay, no, cool. I'm agreeing with you. I, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, like, real. yeah, like, I don't know. Like, because even as I look at it, I mean, we, I, I see the triple S soul. It's something is really, really bothering me. And hopefully, in post production, they can zoom in on the three stripes in that Balenciaga tab right there. Like, something about that is really messing with me to the point that I could see this being, you know, as we call it back in Philly, a fugazi. Like, I just, you know, I'm not sure. Still speaking of collabs, um, but a more favorite collab, uh, Supreme and Nike SB will reportedly continue their partnership this year with the SB Blazer collab. IG user Sneaker Jams with a Z underscore new revealed sample versions of an unseen Supreme Nike SB Blazer mid. The unreleased shoe features a predominantly purple colorway and a white Supreme lettering wrapped around the lateral side of the upper and toe box. The shoe also features a co-branded tongue tag and tonal white tooling. As of now, there is no release details on this Supreme Nike SB Blazer mid. Corey, what do you think of this collab? Yo, so I feel bad. Um, I love the Blazer silhouette, especially the SB Blazer silhouettes. I think like the SB collection of Blazers has always just been perfect. Whether it was, um, you know, just like the, whether it's the colorways, whether it's just technology, whatever. I have wide feet and I don't think Blazers look well on people <laughs> with wide feet, so I can never get these off. Um, but these are sick. I think like, you know, you know, kind of what we talked about, uh, what was that, the Zoom, the Zoom 95s we talked about last week? where you know supreme either does something that we absolutely love or absolutely hate i think these are really hard i feel i can definitely see these being a summer shoe but also a winter shoe you know i can see people dressing these up but also dressing these down um you know even just kind of like that kind of pop art supreme all over the shoe is like it's kind of cool to me um it's definitely a shoe that i could see somebody wearing and it being like the focal piece of their outfit um these are hard i wish we saw more supreme blazers you know if i can't do that hopefully y'all can um but yeah I, I like these these are tough yeah i mean i think they're cool i don't know why and maybe it's just like the quality of the pictures like we've been looking at but everything has given me so like red show or like these are like old sneakers like what we've seen on the show thus far but michael what do you think of this clap yeah, I'm not a big blazer guy, and just like we were talking about with the Balenciaga, this could be an old sample that is never coming out, or it could be on its way next season or next week, even right? <laughs> the way that Supreme keeps their stuff under wraps. Um, I appreciate that you know Supreme has one of the best blazer collabs ever, right? And instead of forcing that retro or bringing that retro back in new colors, which I'm sure they will at some point, it'll be really dope that they're trying to create new classics right that people are talking mm -hmm. about 20 years from now again so i think it's cool that they're trying something new um, i'm curious to see if it actually comes out or not it's not something that, that you would catch me wearing though. <laughs> okay so we don't talk about women's stuff often but when we do on this show i get super excited so nike has launched an all women's initiative called the athlete think tank the brand's new organization is intended to better the future for the next generation of women in sports so for this partnership um nike partnered with 13 iconic female athletes names including people like serena williams angela davis sabrina ionescu and more the think tank athletes will use their experiences to give nike insights on how to improve the sports industry for women nike also announced that they will be donating 1.3 million dollars towards programs that increase sports participation for girls i don't know if you guys have seen this initiative but what do you guys think of nike um you know diving into this marco yeah more of this right a lot of this stuff is long overdue um i'm hoping it's more than 1.3 million but i know that nike already kind of invests in the game as a whole it's good to see them investing in, in the women's games in particular um this is a great group of people if anyone's going to lead the way for the next generation um it's going to be this group so i'm excited to see what comes from it yeah me too i think that like you said, these 13 women that they have chose are we great pioneers. And I can just, I totally see Nike adding more to that um, as the program goes on. And I totally see them 
putting more money into it. I know that they already have, and Nike has definitely um, always been at like the forefront of pushing like women in sports. And so you love to see it. Corey, what do you think? I mean, same, same, and same. Um, you know, I think this is really dope. You know, I, I like the fact that um, certain companies, Nike being one of them, are are actively taking the opportunity to feed uh, feed. You know, I guess overlooked markets. You know, like like just you know the the the, the woman market in sports is something that's been kind of looked over for a long time. Um, and you know, Nike along with other brands, you know, I know Gatorade is doing some stuff like that. You know, they're really trying to feed into women's sports. Um, so it's really good that they're doing this. You know, I think 1.3, you know, million and stuff like that. It's very easy for us to say, I hope it's more. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is the beginning of, you know, a long tiered program. Um, just kind of like what you guys said, bringing in more athletes, bringing in more athletes that, um, you know, appeal to younger demographics and, you know, younger girls, you know, looking to get into sports and stuff like that. And as well, just, you know, more financial backing as well. So, you know, kudos to them, props to them. I think this is dope. Um, even just aesthetically, like how this was shot, it seems pretty cool. So I like it a lot. Okay, so still speaking of Nike and women, so for this segment it is Drops of the Week, a look at some of the most coveted sneaker releases for this week. Are these kicks a buy or a pass? So still talking about Nike and women's, they are releasing a Dunk Low in Vintage Green, releasing Thursday, March 24th at $110. Thoughts on these? Are they a buy or a pass? Corey, what do you think? Uh, So for me, I mean, you know, obviously women's shoes, so I would hope they, you know, women get the <laughs> first deference on these for me uh i mean I, I obviously you know I, we always i think we said talk this week in a week out dunks are the silhouette of you know of the time right um not necessarily i'm not necessarily a fan it seems like there's a little bit of a shine or a sheen on these shoes um it doesn't look like just necessarily like just regular leather um so that would kind of be a pass for me but you know i could definitely see these as a great shoe to be a staple for someone's wardrobe whether you know you're a dunk head or if you, you know this is your first pair um, I think this could be a great like launching point for that. Yeah, I think if you missed out on the Michigan State does, then you definitely might want these. Um, like you said, that shiny, whatever that is on the shoe, I'm not really feeling yeah. it. And honestly, like I said, if you have like the Michigan State dunks, all you gotta do is really like walk outside or like step in some dirt and you'll probably get that yellow. <laughs> so anyways, you know what I mean? Um, I, I, I mean, I like the colorway. I have the Michigan State dunks, so I don't necessarily need these. And that was not a flex at all. Um, but I definitely can see a lot of ladies supporting <laughs> these and, you know, waving them out. So kudos to that. Um, but it'll be a pass for me. Marco? Mar Marco, I like how we both heard that it's not a flex. It's not. Said. I have to let that be known. <laughs> I have to let it be known because I do not flex on this show. <laughs> I think these are great. Um, I, I saw them in person last week. A friend of mine had them. And to Corey's point, it was her first pair of dunks. And I think it's a great starter shoot. Um, it's a great consolation prize for the Michigan States. I actually really like the the how tasteful and subtle the aging is that sheen that you guys are referring to i did not see it when i saw them in real life so i don't know if it's okay. just the images they were trying to make that leather look way more worn than, than maybe it is but in person okay. these are nice um i wish they came in men's sizes because i would love to pay whatever these are going for instead of whatever the michigan states are going for but this is a great shoe man i love that because you could overdo the aging thing really easily yeah. right where we live in an era where we want everything to be old it's like this instant og status um they they did these right i like these so can y'all just have my back for that negative comment i'm sorry to go back to it but saying that dunks are not versatile <laughs> because like, Wait, who who said that? Someone, I was literally, I'm telling you one day, and I think I talked about this on the last episode. I was like sifting through, I was like going, I was watching your episodes because I was like, oh, like, why would I not watch our episodes on YouTube? And I was like reading through the comments and everything was so like positive. And there was one comment that was like, this side, no, she doesn't know about sneakers. She said dunks are versatile. And I'm like, how are dunks not versatile? <laughs> First of all, begging for a response. And he got one out of me. He got me on a good day because that day I had time. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the um, other pair of shoes releasing um, today. These are the Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 Weight Runners, and it is a restock. And they are restocking at $300. Um, I've seen these so many times. Uh, do we got Do we got to do this? <laughs> we have to. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm just... The, I, the, 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 <laughs> the Yeezy shit. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Case. I guess we could just end it with like a simple fire pass. No detail needed. I think this, well, this is, I don't think this, I know this. This is Kanye's best Adidas silhouette 
ever. Um, it's I love to see it coming back so often because uh, Adidas is really flipping the retro strategy and the retro market on its head, saying we know people want this shoe, we know what it sells for aftermarket, so we're just gonna give it to you like once every six months, and everybody will get it. It's a promise that Kanye made, and he's keeping. I think this is this is an always on strategy that I don't have an issue with because it's just it's just a beautiful shoe. Man. It's also interesting that this one sells for a little bit more than the rest of the uh, colorways of the silhouette, which. Uh, I hate to say, I don't really have a problem with it. This is like a tier above any other colorway. So um, I think you, if you if they brought if they were bringing back, let's say like bread ones every six months, and they're a little bit more than a normal AJ one, I don't think people would have a problem because it's like it's the best one. I like this shoe. I'm glad they keep bringing it back. But you're right. Maybe the next time it comes out, we we, we skip it on the same. I'll, I'll I'll say this. I'll say this, Marco. You 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 you've warmed my heart a little bit because I'm just like, bro. I, I've I see this shoe all the time over the last X amount of years. Why are we doing another re uh, another you know restock now? But that is a, that's a great mentality, right? Like you know if this is you know the top tier shoe you know of the line, you know they want to make sure that people get actually have a chance to get their hands on it. Um, so they are gonna keep restocking this every six months. Like it makes more sense. I definitely understand it. But yeah, I don't want to see this shoe again on, on <laughs> Unbox Radio because it's just like we see it. <laughs> All right. So moving on to uh, this segment of the show is You Dead Ass. This is a fun segment where we highlight and share our thoughts on the wildest stories that went viral this week. Balenciaga released a new silhouette from their latest collection called the Defender. Um, the sneaker immediately went viral for its unusual look. The shoe features a leather upper with a huge tire inspired midsole that has an arch. Balenciaga re released two colorways of the shoe, black and beige, valued at $1,000. Thousand and ninety dollars each. Of course, online fans did not hesitate to roast the new shoe for their look. Corey, your face already says it all. But what do you think of this? Lens? I mean, the shoe. Oh, the shoe is called a defender. What is it defending? What, what, what is it defending for me? I know what it's defending. <laughs> it's defending me spending that amount of money in my pockets and my wallet <laughs> for a shoe looking like this. I mean, you know, you know, it's funny when I first saw this. I, I just have a mentality whenever it comes to any type of shoes that look like this then i'm like you know what this shoe is not meant for me so it really kind of like pulls it away pulls me away from like really like trashing it dragging it stuff like that i'm like yo like this is not a shoe that's meant for me as a consumer um so whoever gets to rock this i'm pretty sure we'll see someone on somebody's somewhere red carpet event whatever you know pulling these off it might look good it might not yeah. um the thing that would raise the red flag for me though is that I saw uh, a similar meme where someone would say, here's how you create your Balenciaga Defenders, where they took a pair of, I forgot the actual brand, um, I forgot the model number, but it was like, you take a pair of Asics, you take yeah. bike tires, you take scissors and glue, you literally like snip it, glue it, and you have a Defender. Um, I think that is that, that kind of just really shows the lack of ingenuity that these high, these high fashion brands have when it comes to making shoes like this, I mean, you know, we've talked about it before. Um, you know, the, the Captain Pepper, you know, St. Laurent's from a couple of weeks back or whatever the shit was. Um, you know, it, it, these are shoes that are that are made to make a statement, um, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. And, you know, like I said, they're, they're not meant for me as a, as a consumer. Uh, so, you know, by, by all means, you know, you, do y'all think with the good year ones. Yeah, no, I hate them so much, but I feel like this is like that <laughs> sneaker that is gonna be like, girls are gonna, and guys are gonna try to wear to kind of like, say they like styled them or made them cool because I feel like a lot of Balenciagas people just like wear them because a lot of people like talk shit about them. So they try to like do their best to like swag them out or like make them look wavy. I really don't see how you can make these look hard, but you know, to each his own. So Marco, what do you think? I Shock value sneakers. We talk about shock value content all the time, doing things just for the sake of it, um, to, to, to cause some sort of reaction. It's the same thing when it comes to sneakers. But Balenciaga's really good at doing that, right? We're here talking mm -hmm. about it. Um, I, I don't know how much of these are actually designed to, to have commercial success as much as they are for brand awareness. I think this falls into the category for me of like, well, we live in a world now where memes have become real life. This is a physical, mm -hmm. this is a meme sneaker. And, and a lot of brands are doing that right now. And again, it's working, right? Because you're maybe not gonna buy it, but Balenciaga is in the news every week now for footwear and uh, maybe that wasn't always the case so yeah pass for me yeah no like you said Balenciaga is good at getting people's attention because I feel like 
in the past, like we've seen that like croc heel and these, and then if that Adidas silhouette is a real thing, like they definitely know how to grab people's attention. So something, they're doing something right, right? So, well, of course, as always, it was great chatting with you guys. And thank you to everybody who tuned in for another episode of Unbox Radio. If you like the show, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe and tune in to the next episode. We out. Peace. Peace. Thanks,